Hi, this is Melinda with Martin Publishing Services, and I'm going to show you how to begin a cover layout in InDesign. I'm just going to kick it off with File, New, Document. I work in inches, and um, I'm going to work with a 6 by 9 for this project. So when you design a cover for um, Amazon KDP, you have to include the bleed into the actual document size. Um, and not use the bleed settings um, built into Adobe InDesign. So instead of making a six by nine front cover and back cover, we're gonna make a 6.125 by 925. And we're gonna do portrait mode. We're gonna do three pages, front, spine, and back. And we're gonna do facing pages and uh, I guess technically you could set your margins to 0.125 for top, bottom, and uh, outside, and hit create. And that's going to give you uh, this view here, which everyone's in design is set up differently. I have my pages panel on the right, but you can also access it through uh, your window menu. Um, I'm going to right click select or deselect allow document pages to shuffle and deselect allow spreads to shuffle and then I'm going to pull these pages together so now we have what's going to become the full cover um, while the front cover is page three and the back cover is page one the middle page is our spine and we need to adjust those margins there. So you're, you want to make sure you double click on the middle page and go to layout margins because the inside and the outside for your spine is going to be 0 0.0625. And so it's set up as a little bit different than your um, front and back cover. Now, you also need to set your uh, spine page to be a workable spine width instead of uh, 6.125 inches in width. So while your middle page is still selected, we're going to go to our page tool and we're going to change that width to 0.3 inches. 0.3 inches is the minimum uh, width of a spine that can have text on it with Amazon KDP. Ingram Spark can do less. Uh, I, I think their minimum page count is 70. I can't remember offhand. Um, but so I always start with a 0.3 and then I adjust as needed. Uh, when the uh, we have a final page count, that's what's going to determine our spine width. Uh, and Amazon KDP, you're going to use the total page count times 0.00225 for white paper or 0 0.0025 for cream paper. Um, and you can actually do that calculation right up here. Like if I had a 300 page document, I could type in 300 times 0 0.025 because I default to cream paper. And it does the math for you and widens that up for you automatically. That is really, one of the key reasons I use InDesign instead of Photoshop or Illustrator, A, is the industry standard for book design, both covers and interiors. Um, B, you want to use the right tool for the job. Photoshop is great for its intended purpose, which is photo manipulation. And Illustrator is great for special effects and vector creation. So you can still work within those other softwares, but then you bring them in together in InDesign uh, for your technical parameters. Uh, InDesign also allows you to export out a uh, very small PDF file size, whereas when you export PDFs from Photoshop and Illustrator, they're often extremely bloated. Uh, most of my cover PDFs are you, just a couple of meg or less, depending on uh, the design involved. Okay. So the 0.125 on the um, bleed, you can see around here, that's like, that's just the edges that are going to be cut away. And so what I like to implement is a good amount of 
um, white space in, in my book cover designs. So I'm actually going to set the uh, front and back page, front and back cover to have a 0.625 top and a 0.625 bottom, a 0.5 on the inside and 0.625 on the outside. And that's going to give me a lot of room to breathe with my design. It looks better on the physical book. And when you do mock-ups, you have a little bit of room to work with um, expanding or shrinking in as needed. For my spine, I'm going to leave its inside and outside margins at 0.0625. And I'm going to set its top and bottom to 0.625. All right, so those are all the parameters that I'm going to be working within. So I'm going to pop open um, a completed cover that I did for uh, modern, modern Wisdom Press. And this is Catherine's book, and I'm going to turn on my guides so you can see how everything is within those margins. Um, I also like to group the front, back, and spine elements together. So I can, uh, it's just good organization <laughs> for starters. Um, and then if I just need to check some things, you know, it's easier for me to turn off those groups. You can also work in layers uh, instead of groups. Um, each designer has their own thing they like to do. And that's fine, always more than one way to skin a cat. So after you get your design uh, completed, when you go to export, you are going to want to select, I'll just do a test here, um, Adobe PDF print, and you'll want to select spreads. And um, this is good, the rest of my settings are good. And so when you do that, it exports your cover out as one PDF page. Um, and that is what you submit to Amazon KDP. Now for your, um, if you need to export out just your front cover or just the back cover or just the spine, then you go to file export and you, if you want it as a PDF or as a, um, uh, JPEG or whatever you want it exported as, Oops. you select that here. Like you say, okay, I want to do JPEG, you know, just a front cover JPEG. Also notice I do not ever name my files final, um, often because there's so many revisions, It maybe even at a later date too. So instead of naming anything final, um, I give it a name, like the name of the book, the size, what the element is, like this is the front cover, and I, I give it a date. I lead in with the year and then the two-digit month and the two-digit day. And then I hit uh, save. And then if I just want to do the front cover, I'm going to select page uh, pages. Then I'm just going to select that one page, page three. You'll want to export out at 300 DPI if you're doing this for print um, or if you just want a large file for you to choose from. If you're exporting for print, you want to change this to CMYK. If you're uh, exporting for digital, you want to use RGB. And then hit export and it exports it out for you. Um, and then when you get done with the design, You'll want to make sure that there are no loose ends, or actually before you export, you should make sure there's no loose ends, no broken links. So you want to check down here, currently it says no errors, which is great. Um, and it's just using the default pre-flat panel. Um, your links panel will show you all the different uh, external elements that are used in the design. So you want to make sure there's no error triangle next to those. Then you will file package. Just hit package here. That has to be saved. Yes, we'll save it. And uh, then you will go in and I'll just pop over to downloads. You'll go in and 
um, name your, your uh, it's going to be your top level folder, your top level folder. Uh, you do want to copy fonts and it says accept the ones activated from Adobe fonts, which I subscribe to Adobe. So that's fine. It'll uh, reactivate those for me or give me an opportunity to install them. Copy link graphics, update graphic links and package. So it'll point the file to the links inside the new folder it's creating. And you can select this if you want. That's just for, I don't know, depending on what you have on your hidden content. The IDML file will allow um, a designer who's using an older version of InDesign to access the InDesign file. So you can include that. And then you can include uh, the PDF just if you're wanting the sample file in there or if that's how you prepare your uh, final document. So I'm just going to hit package. It's going to say restrictions apply to font software. OK. Pages with transparency, blah, blah. OK. So it's creating a folder that just is going to have a links folder. It's going to have a um, fonts folder inside of there. And then it will have your INDD file, an IDML if you include it, and a PDF if you included it. And that is what you should send to your uh, to your publisher or to your author. Um, or that's what they should have worked that out with you. But I, I personally don't like holding on to those files. It's best practice that the author slash publisher have them. And so just do the right thing and send that on, send a properly packaged file on. So for the barcode, I actually have barcode generating software, but you can sometimes your client's going to provide that barcode. Um, or you can, if you're in a pinch, go to uh, B O O K O W bookcal.com and you can make a donation and um, request a barcode that way. And I do like to include the uh, publisher logo, the uh, category, the retail price on the back. It just makes it look like the professionals we are. It has that information on there. The uh, press logo is also on the spine. And when you're ready to do your mock-up, I recommend covervault.com. Uh, he, he's got several, it's been a work in progress over the years. So his earlier ones, of course, aren't as good as the ones he has now. But uh, some of the favorites that I use, um, this is good. You can, you know, turn off the backgrounds and stuff like that. And let me see. This basil, I think is what it's called. Yeah, basil and spice is a good uh, cover mock-up. I also like nature things and um, this romantic steps. I like the ones that have the back covers because then I can like mix and match and do different uh, types of layouts as needed. And then he has one. That is a, I don't see it. It has the tablet and the book together. Let me look under six by nine. These are free to download. Uh, they are for commercial use. Um, he's a super nice guy to make this available. I mean, of course it's part of his business plan, but still, it's still great to have this. Yeah, he's got this one that has multiple books stacked and, oh, there it was, okay. And where are you? I'm looking. But not, oh, okay, there it is. And this one. Okay, so those are ones that I use. And I can't really think of anything else that I need to add to this video. But if you have any questions, oh, yeah, I know what I was going to add. Okay, so when you're doing this, when you're doing your layout, remember our inside margins were only set to a half inch, but our outside margins are set to 0.625 inches. And that's because that outer 0.125 is going to be trimmed away. So we need to make sure that we're centering our objects um, to 
they want to be centered after the bleed is cut away. And so when you make your um, center marks, uh, you want to center them on, on this, between these two purple lines. And so I already have the, the ruler set, but so see if I extend out to the side, it's just a little bit off center. So you just want to make sure to take that into account when you're doing your um, any vertical or horizontal centering to center within your actual um, uh, post cut uh, cover file. Hope I'm making sense. <laughs> All right, if you have any questions, let me know. And this was helpful. Thank you.